is this going to last? You know, most people can stand up under trouble if they know that eventually it's going to it's going to end. But if it never ends, how will we survive? So there you have a back history question. Who are you, Lord? And Habakkuk gave his own answers. Good answers, by the way. He supplied his own answer to who God is. And then he says, how can you, God, how can you do this? There's no answer offered. And the last question is, how long is this going to last? Still, no answer is given yet. So these are all honest questions. They're the kind that we ask, every one of us, ask at the time, at the time of trouble. I mean, we should really make note that Habakkuk is utterly, un he's an honest man. He's righteous before God, by the way. He's honest with God, and when he has doubts, he doesn't has hesitate to watch this. He's going to deal with God, because this is where, his, this is where everything happens. And everything you've got in your life, every issue, it's God. And he's an honest man. He's a righteous man. So what does he do? He takes his issues to God. You know, that's when we take things to the Lord in prayer. Somebody say, I know that song. Amen. He doesn't cover up his doubts, though. He doesn't cover up his doubts with, by, by saying, you know, these things are, you know, pious. Uh, but nor does he rush in to give glib answers. It's like, that, that's why we, listen, be, be very slow to speak when you're trying to give an answer. I, I, I'm going to get on a side, I end up on a bunny trail on that one. Give some thought before you answer. The other thing we can see is that he is confident in God, but he's confused. And he's honest about that. He's confident with God, but what? He's confused. He's confused by what God is doing in the world. And he's believing, is a, a believing man with a serious question that he can't answer himself. So then it moves us on to Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1. And listen to what he says. I will stand my watch. I will set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. Remember what I said about truth? It doesn't mind being questioned. God is not, he doesn't have a problem with you questioning him. So that leads me to a very important point. Because our deepest problems are not psychological. They're not sociological. They're not probably even emotional. And they're certainly not really political. Our deepest problem is always theological. Do you remember that remember years ago a lot of services, I would say, good theology can save your life. The questions that we have to ask is, can God be trusted? Can He be trusted? Amen. And what kind of God do we believe in? What kind of God the one and only. do we believe in? You can say one and only, but that doesn't mean anything. God. What kind of God do we believe in? Nebuchadnezzar was one king. And who could stop him with his mighty army? So as I was thinking about that question, here's some things that came to my mind and I wrote them down. He's not the God that we think he is. He's much better than that. God is not the God that you think he is. He's much better. Oh, you're not getting that at all. What was that song? My God is more than enough. He can supply all my needs. He's better than that. He's bigger than that. You know, it's not only true, but it's a huge, it's a big truth right there. I mean, I chose the word better because it sums up all that I'm trying to say in this whole message. God is better. 
than any idea we could ever have of him. We can't even imagine how great he is. We like to think about it. We like to read about it. We, we've imagined it. We've seen it, some of it. But he's still greater than that. Not only is God far beyond us, much vaster than our puny little minds can conceive, he's a lot better than we've ever imagined. And some of us got pretty big imaginations. Every thought that you have, every idea, every notion that you have about God, he's better than that. So what do you do when you've prayed to God and, and you don't like the answer that you've received? You know, that happens an awful lot, doesn't it? Sooner or later, every one of us, if you've done it, you'll do it again. You're going to go to God. You're going to pray for something. And it's just not going to work out the way you would hope that it would work out. Mm. Some of us, we're going to try bargaining with God. But that doesn't work. Wait, 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 wait. You get angry with God, but that doesn't help either. You can ask God some questions, which, by the way, isn't that what's happening right here? That's what Habakkuk's doing. He's asking the questions. Yes. You can go back to the first principle, and then you can remind yourself of who God is, and that's what Habakkuk did. My question is, will you wait on the Lord? Is he going to keep emptying his net, destroying nations without mercy? God. Most all of us, we've decided one time or another to wait. I want to encourage you this morning. Let's wait again. Let's wait on God. Let's wait on the Lord of faith and the Lord of hope. And, and, and let's wait in confidence because what we understand when we read Scripture and we look back on the times in our life when it seemed all hope seemed lost, we found out that God was there. And when you wait, let's remember something. This is tough. When you wait, remember this. God doesn't keep time the way we do. Tick, tick, tick. No, he doesn't see time like we do. A.W. Tozer said this. God never hurries. There are no deadlines against which he must work. True. Hebrews chapter 11, they, they, they call that the hall of faith. They were faithful people. So, so, so faithful were they that they got their names in the book. And if they got their names there, I'm sure they, there's another book that their name is in. Amen? And how many of you want to have your name in that book when it's all over? Amen. But the Bible says that there were many, they had such faith, they never received the promise, but they still what? What? Still believed. They still believed. And because of that, it was accounted to them as faith. Their belief was counted as faith. Remember, your faith is a choice. I choose today to believe because I, I have chosen that there was nothing else to believe. I believe the truth. You know, and waiting is good for the soul. If you're waiting on the Lord, that is. And especially if you're waiting on God. I mean, you, when you wait, remember that God has not forgotten you. Turn to your neighbor's and remind you right now. Say, God's not forgotten you. God's not forgotten you. God has not forgotten you. You are on right. Mm. Come down here. Right now, you're on God's mind. Wait, wait. Thank you. You're on his mind. Praise you. You're on his mind. Wait, but not the way I just pointed. Individually, all at one time, individually, specifically, we're all on his mind. And he perfectly understands, he perfectly comprehends, he perfectly understands everything all at once. Yet, I can only see her, then I can see him. And, and I, might, I might close my eyes and imagine that I can see everybody.